If you plan on homeschooling geometry, well, you definitely want to watch this video because I'm going to give you a lot of good information. Some of this stuff you may already know, but uh, some you may not. And if you don't know all this information, well, you may not homeschool geometry in the most effective way. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And I also have an award-winning homeschool math program. So I offer courses from pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Pre-Calculus. So you can check out all the information to this program in the description of this video. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this content because I don't want to make this video too long because I know your time is precious, but I really want to make sure you understand the big picture when it comes to geometry because this is a critical course for your child. Now, hopefully, you're going to leave... Uh, college as an option for your child. I'm a big um, believer that most people should try to strive to have their child, uh, their children go through like a college prep math track in high school. Okay, so just in case your child changes their mind or like, you know what, I wasn't going to go to college, but now I want to go to college, they'll be ready. So let's just kind of take a look at a general college prep math track. So typically we have what the ninth 10th, 11th, and 12th grades year, uh, years here. Now, unless your child is going to take something like the GED or maybe they're going to go to college, uh, like a community college, during their high school years, this is the kind of typical uh, program for most high school students, right? So we have uh, four years, 9, 10, 11, and 12th grades. So ninth grade, for the most part, is where people take Algebra 1. Now, sometimes people continue on in Algebra 2. They take Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. This is not a good idea because in the 11th grade, if your child is going to college, they're going to start taking the SAT and ACT, and there's other tests out there as well, like the CLT, etc. But basically, these are college entrance exams. Now, these are really, really important because you need both algebra and geometry to be successful on these exams. Now, you can see here we have a problem. If your child was uh, taking algebra 2 in the 10th grade and then now in the 11th grade they're taking geometry, well, during the course of this year, they're still learning the subject of geometry. They're not going to be fully prepared for the geometry on the SAT, ACT, or CLT, or some other exam. And uh, roughly speaking, for the SAT and ACT and these other exams, yeah, I'm, it's maybe not 50-50. There might be a little bit more of a skew towards algebra, but uh, maybe 60-40 or 50-50, something like that kind of uh, distribution of algebra and geometry. So what I'm trying to say is there is a lot of geometry on these exams, all right? So if your child has not you know, had a chance to learn all of geometry and then go back and review, they're at a serious disadvantage for these exams. So that's why you want to take geometry in the 10th grade. So this, is, uh, this should be your goal. So if you weren't quite sure about when to take geometry, it's always better to take it in the 10th grade. Now you might be wondering, uh, why did I bring this up? Well, this is a very, very common question. I've been working with homeschoolers for many, many years, and a lot of people are confused about when they should take geometry because they think it's a good idea to uh, do Algebra 2 in the 10th grade. In other words, just kind of get all your algebra done. And also, there's another reason you don't want to do this is because Algebra 2 is kind of a redo of Algebra 1 or a review of all the things you learned in Algebra 1 and then you learn additional things. So if your child is doing two years of algebra, they tend to get kind of burnt out. But you definitely need to get algebra one completed before you take geometry because you need a lot of algebra to solve geometry problems. All right, so definitely algebra one, first your algebra and then geometry. And I really want to be clear here, it's algebra one, not pre-algebra. Okay, so obviously pre-algebra is the course you take before Algebra 1, and typically that is at the 8th grade level. 
All right, so hopefully I made my case to plan on taking geometry after Algebra 1. And even if uh, that means that your child took Algebra 1 in the 10th grade, well, then do geometry in the 11th grade. All right, so let's just kind of finish up here with our courses, and then we'll get back to geometry. So after geometry, you would want to do Algebra 2. And then after Algebra 2, you want to kind of look at courses like pre-calculus or statistics. So both are good courses, but if your child is definitely going to uh, college, I would strongly encourage pre-calculus because this is, the, this is the course you need to take before calculus. All right, so again, geometry after Algebra 1. Now let's talk about what type of geometry course your child should take. Now, this really kind of uh, depends. Sometimes, uh, you know, depending on if your child is maybe not sure about college, you could just want to, you know, find a good geometry course. Okay, now what distinguishes a, a good geometry course from one that is much more rigorous? Well, there is this thing called proofs, okay? So proofs in geometry is proving things, all right? So I'm just kind of abbreviating here. But you may have heard of proofs. Matter of fact, you may remember doing proofs in your high school geometry course. And typically, students do not like proofs, you know, <laughs> because they're challenging and confusing. So uh, oftentimes, college programs and will uh, really encourage uh, students to, or, or various universities. Let me kind of rephrase this. If they look back on your geometry course, they may want to look at, you know, what was in that course. Not all colleges or universities, but if they do, one of the distinguishing factors in terms of how rigorous your geometry course uh, was is did you cover proofs? Okay, so this is a big, big kind of uh, topic in geometry. Now, the way it works at a lot of, let's say, public high schools is the following. So typically there's like three tracks or just two tracks, but you have uh, kind of like an average track. Okay, so let's say most people would take regular geometry and this regular geometry uh, course would cover all the big concepts, basically lines. We're talking about uh, the basic concepts and geometry. So let me kind of review this again. So we're talking about lines, uh, polygons, circles, angles, triangles, et cetera, et cetera. And they may do a little bit of proofs, kind of like a, maybe a quick introduction to them. Now, there is more of a kind of a basic version that people could take, a kind of maybe kind of like a, a remedial version of geometry that uh, would just kind of emphasize the basic concepts of geometry. And they probably won't even get into any proofs. But a course like Geometry Honors, okay, so you may have heard of this, uh, kind of like more of a, you know, advanced level geometry course in high school, is going to cover all this stuff plus a lot of proofs, okay? So they're really going to emphasize this, and this is challenging. Now, I happen to have a degree in mathematics, and I can tell you the essence of mathematics is proving things. We're talking about deductive logic, et cetera, et cetera. And in geometry, you learn a lot of uh, theorems, postulates, definitions, etc. And you apply these things to prove things. But I would really encourage your child to take a geometry course where there is proofs because it will increase their critical thinking. All right, this is really, really important stuff. So even if they're not going uh, to college, and are like, well, I'm not going to college. Just the whole idea, the whole exercise of proving things is excellent because this is really kind of an exercise in logic. So don't shy away from courses that um, have proofs or more uh, rigorous geometry courses. Again, you know, as a homeschooler, you have uh, flexibility, but uh, generally speaking, in high schools, uh, what's going to happen is students are going to finish up their algebra course. And now this is not for all schools, but depending on how well they did here, they're going to place into various geometry courses. So if they're on the fast track and did really, really well, so if your child is like a, you know, doing great in um, mathematics and they really did well in algebra one, you may want to uh, consider a geometry course that has a lot of proofs. Now, my geometry course has a lot of proofs in it. 
okay? But I don't think it's overly onerous per se. So again, I do include proofs in my course because it is important. But uh, even if your child, you know, gets confused with the problems about proofs, uh, you know, it's not, um, it's not the end of the world, let's just say, <laughs> because as long as they're understanding the uh, other concepts in geometry, like circles, you know, polygons, quadrilaterals, lines, angles, triangles, et cetera, et cetera, this is really what counts on exams like the SAT and the ACT. So you're really not going to... Uh, use proofs that much unless you're going to be like a math major but you will be using your kind of critical thinking skills proving things etc etc so this is an excellent kind of introduction to that kind of thinking all right so hopefully this little video helped you out and if you have any questions about geometry what you can do or my geometry program is uh, use the contact form on our site Either myself or one of our team members can answer any questions that you might have about geometry. But if you're looking for a strong, full curriculum, a full geometry curriculum with proofs, I definitely offer that. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.